We will move against non-legal sanctions. Olari Waju, ex-communications minister, speaks. The former minister of communication, Major General Tajidin Olari Waju, retired, has disclosed that plans are underway to ensure that non-legal sanctions do not get into elected offices in the 2027 election. Olari Waju is the alternate chairman of the Renaissance Patriots Foundation in Ikurudu, Lagos State lamented that existing political parties in the state denying indigenous of the state the opportunity to fill important political posts during the election. He also revealed the conspiracy to capture Lagos State permanently by the ruling elite, most of whom are residents, non indigenous, will be foiled in 2027. Olare Waju said, the question that needs to be answered lies in who stands for political interest of the indigents in the affairs of government, who also determines who qualify to represent legal state in national and state assemblies, and also who could fill appointment quotas from within and outside the state. Some might say that the answer lies within the realms of the constitution. This does not represent a good reason or explain why, for 25 years, Lagos State has remained the only state in the whole of the Federation since the beginning of the Fourth Republic in 1999 that has not been governed by an indigent with the right of blood except once. The existing political parties take the liberty to always deny the indigent of the state to fill the most important political posts during elections and running of government. The only argument they usually pose, which is false, is that the indigenous population is not in our favor. There is no empirical data to prove this issue. Lagos State, where its economic status and level of development offers more comparative advantage than other states of the Federation. That is the reason why the struggle for control of Lagos State resources becomes fierce and unrelenting. Does this fallacy make the position of indigenous to govern the state untenable? The Renaissance Patriots Foundation thinks there is a conspiracy to capture the state permanently by the ruling elite, most of whom are resident non indigents It thus brings us to the main point of why the political parties prefer residents who are non indigents to be at the helm of affairs, using them as pliable tools to do the wish of the ruling government. So it becomes a lot to explain the situation whereby about 60% of our representations at national and state assembly, local government areas, and councillors are all non-indigenous. This is where we, the Renaissance Patriots of Lagos State, believe that the political, uh, the political administration will engage the indigenous to the back seat. It seems that for these reasons, every four years of political administration in Lagos State, the indigents get closer and closer to critical moments in making certain decisions about how they want to rule themselves. Those who hide under the constitutional freedom of movement and residency are clever by half because they have political choices as first citizens of your state. This is an abuse of the constitution. This is an abuse of the constitution. It is only in Lagos State that you can find positions, appointments, and nominations which ought to be reserved for indigents given to those who claim double state of origin simply because they live in Lagos State. The fundamental defects in this government's political dispensation, for example, in Lagos State, and in particular, her lack of human spirit towards the Lagos State indigents, had resulted in disillusionment and agitations for political entitlement. Failures of national and state policies have contributed to the instabilities in the oil-rich Delta region. Insurgency in the Northeast, banditry and kidnapping in many states of the Federation, considering our political, economic, historical, and social concerns in Lagos State, including our rise to essential land and interaction that have lasted two centuries. We cannot but be careful not to be subjected to genocide by migration by settlers. The objective of resident non indigenous is to capture legal states politically and deny the indigenous people their constitutional rights and privileges. How do you explain the situation when holders of six important political offices most often are held by non indigents? The ruling elite and leadership in legal state government, by holding on to the most top political positions, control the political administration 
and the state resources are used the states to climb the political ladders at the expense of the indigents. Important decisions, political selection, and a constitutional entitlement are located on the basis of inequality and self-interest. We can give example of non-indigents who proudly hold double indigenship and use legal step as stepping stones. How do they achieve it? They achieve it through false declaration because they are never confirmed to be known by family that claim to come from Lagos. It is a betrayal, wrongful representation and lack of respect for Lagos state indigents when the contesting parties nominate candidates who have two states of origin for the state. Our state should do everything possible to ensure that indigents are not overwhelmed by the daily movement of people who decide to settle in our midst. The ruling elite must not try to put a yoke of slavery on the indigent because of the streaming migration of settlers on the land. The political parties must change their attitude, choose their candidate from the indigenous people of Lagos State. Advise that the indigents must fight to take back their state. A residency factor has been solely used as a wedge, an instrument of divide and rule, to achieve control of our political rights. It is always a willing tool of political oppression that has kept indigenous people away from running the state. After the end of its tenure in 2027, it will be 19 years that Lagos State has remained a political orphan. We strongly believe that the ambiguity surrounding the issues of indigenship should be considered in a memoranda that was submitted to the Constitution Review Committee. In addition, he said, Indigenous across parties must stand up and contest for any elective positions from the governorships, Senate, House of Reps, House of Reps, State Assembly, local government areas, and councillorship, and also via her appointment in two offices at state and federal levels. They should not be intimidated and must push back against political bullies. The indigents from the five divisions must insist on their top party leaders that only five indigents must be nominated as their governor and deputy governor, ship candidates, speaker, assembly members, senate and members, house of representatives. Senate and members of the house of representatives. Advocacy is essentially a demand for human dignity. Let us stand up for what is right, even if it means standing alone. Okay, well, I don't know where this man gets this notion from, but this notion is really not true. I'm not in the nation, but I sincerely agree with you. This is one of the tools to promote Nigeria unity, but most of non-indigent misuse the opportunity. Imagine a situation where non-indigent claiming Lagos is no man lands, really. And this man that is saying this is really, really old, though. I can only imagine the kind of thing where this man don't transmit, the kind of knowledge where this man don't give in children. All right, on this note, we've come to the end of the news. We say thank you for tuning in to listen until I come your way next time. Enjoy the rest of your day.